everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love. Revival love. Supernatural love. Jesus is love. 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 Well, hello there and welcome to Everlasting Love. I'm very excited about today's program because it's about a subject that I adore. It's about God's heavenly help his angels. And you know, in the world that we're living in, I mean, th things are rough out there, aren't they? Every single day, there seems to be, you know, tragedy of some kind or terrorist movements or people killing each other and natural disasters. And there's just constantly things on the news that could cause people's heart to tremble. But God wants you to know that you are safe. When you belong to Jesus Christ, he's got angelic help all around you. That's right. There are invisible beings in the invisible realm that are watching out for you. And the realm of the supernatural is just, oh, I just love it. I love studying it in the Bible. I love living it. And I want to help you live it. I want to help you understand it. I want to help you know that these things are for you. Every promise regarding the supernatural, things that God shows you and reveals to you regarding the supernatural dimensions of the kingdom of heaven, it belongs to you if you are a believer. So let's open our little mentoring time today with 2 Corinthians and we're in chapter 3 and verse or chapter 4 rather and verse 18 and it says while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things that are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and so we have this invisible realm around us that is the kingdom realm and in that realm God has majesties and heavenly beings, angels that are sent to serve you. If you look at Hebrews chapter 1 and starting in verse 1, let's read 1 to 4. It says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days, he has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. In verse 4, it says, Having become as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. And then also going to verse 13 and 14, it says, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Wow, I love this scripture. It's so powerful because it, it reveals many things to us. And before we talk any more about these angels that God has appointed to you and the angels that he wants you to have experience with, we want to settle an issue. And that is angels are not to be worshipped. Only Jesus is to be worshipped. He is above all all else. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one that we look to for all things. It makes it clear here. And it says of the angels that they're very real. Of course they're real. You know, they are real because God created them. He created them for what purpose? To serve you. That's why he created the angels. You are an heir of salvation when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when you do, the angels are there to serve you, to help bring you into destiny and to protect your life. And in this session, I just want to provoke you and stir up your interest in this realm because every believer can actually discern these angels. Every believer can encounter them because it's like once we become a member of the kingdom of God, we can flow in and out with God, in and out of the invisible realm, the visible realm, because 
we're connected all the time. Did you know that Jesus was always living in two realms at the same time? He lived in the heavenly dimension and he lived in the earthly dimension all at the same time. He always was connected to his father and he said, I only do what I see my father do. That's out of John 5 verse 19. And how could he see what his father was doing except he be in heaven? Okay, so he lived in that realm because the Father lives in the heavenly realm, but he also lived in the earth all at the same time. And you and I can do the same. We can be connected to our heavenly Father in heaven, just like Jesus was, and live in the realm in the earth with the invisible all around us and we being familiar with that and in touch with that. And you know, I wanna share some personal testimonies right now because testimonies are so powerful. When the Lord does something in your life, testify about it, why? Because the Bible says out of Revelations that when you testify, it is like the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so it enables God to do it again in those that hear the testimony. So I wanna stir you up with excitement because I believe that you are in a season of increased angelic visitation. So the first story I want to share is my very first in my very first visitation of an angelic encounter and it was with an open vision. I was in my living room and in our home at that time we had a lower level living room and then an upper level balcony with a dining room in it and everything was open concept. So I was there praying away I looked up and there was this angel, a full form angel there. I saw it in the upper balcony from its torso up and the top of its head was going through the roof. I, of course, did not expect to see an angel and it was an open, vivid vision. And I screamed when I saw it. I just was shocked to see it. So, ah! And as soon as I screamed, it went out of my vision. I couldn't see it anymore. And I thought, oh no, please, Lord, let me see it again. I want to see that angel. It was so amazing, please. And I never did get to see it with open vision again. But you know what's awesome when you have an angelic encounter? It's like when it happens to you, you have it in your memory bank so that it, bring, it is brought back by the Spirit of God and you can remember the very essence of it. You can remember the impact that it had. Even telling you right now, I'm getting excited all over again because the reality of it is still in my heart. Now, I asked the Lord because you always want to know what is it there for, right? Like you might wonder, well, why would God send an angel like that? And so I asked him, that's all you have to do is simply ask him. I asked him, God, what is that angel here for? And he says, that is a protection angel. I send him to watch over you. Our ministry was in a lot of warfare at the time because we were bringing some new things forward and there was some controversy over it. And, and so the Lord sent an angel to battle off spiritual beings because there's dark spirits too. I mean, the demons got his army, but that angel was sent to ward off those spirits and to fight on our behalf behalf sent by God. It was amazing. It was a warring angel. And that angel is actually with us to this very day with our ministry. I have not seen it with open vision since, but it's still there. Now, how would you like to have the assurance that there's a warring angel in your life protecting you and watching over you? Well, you know what? You have them. Because God's word says that the angels encamp around those who fear him or respect him. And so they're encamped around you. He says his fire is around you. His glory is in the midst of you. And that's because the angels are there. The angels are there to watch over and to protect you. That is one of the mandates that they have. Isn't that fun? And so I hope that you're stirred right now because this should bring hope to you. And some of you, you know, I'm just sensing right now that there are some of you in a tremendous battle right now and you can actually feel the pressure of the demonic realm against you. And I believe this is a word of the Lord for you that he has sent his angels to watch over you and that he will fight for you. There is more that are fighting for you than those that are against you. And a boy, can I feel power on that decree? Well, let me share with you another story. And this one happened um, as we were on our way down to Mexico. A number of years ago, 
I was uh, leading a group down in Tijuana, Mexico. It was an outreach uh, center. And I had to commute back and forth from Vancouver, British Columbia. So I was leading the team, but I would go down, come back, go down, come back. And so we'd go down the I-5 in California, driving many times back and forth. Now, on this one particular trip I was on, I was with a friend who was with me. And we were praying and having good fellowship and worship. And we're driving along the uh, highway. And all of a sudden, the car just starts rolling all over the place. I thought, oh, no what has happened and so I pulled over onto the shoulder and we found out that we had um, a flat tire it was completely flat so I went into the back to get the the tire out but it was it was broken I didn't have an adequate tire to put on on the vehicle so I must admit I got worried for a few moments but then I remembered no you know what God is bigger than this problem and I said to my friend let's just worship let's just worship Jesus and so we were worshiping him and glorifying him and had our hearts set upon him and then all of a sudden I think it was maybe after five minutes or so this truck pulls up in front of us and stops and this man got out now when you're on the I-5 you know pulled over on the shoulder and you're you know two women out there and a man pulls pulls up that could that could be dangerous especially in these days but we didn't have any fear we felt peace he, he felt like he was a really great guy he seemed nice and kind and he says what can I do to help you and I said well we've got a flat tire but I don't have a tire in the back that's going to work on this and he says well let me see what I can do and he went into the back of his truck and he came back with the perfect tire size rim and everything on it and he just pulled the whole thing off and put the new one on in no time at all and he says is there anything else I can do for you and I thought wow this is so nice uh, thank you so much and so I went into uh, the vehicle to, to get my bag. I wanted to give him a gift and go back and thank him. And I went to say uh, goodbye and thank you and give him this gift. And I'd only been gone for a few, few secs. He was gone, nowhere to be seen. We didn't know what happened to him or the truck. And I believe that that was an angelic visitation. Now, wouldn't you like to know when you're out there on the highway or maybe on a camping trip or something and something goes wrong that you've got angelic help available to you? And in that case, guess what? That angelic help came in the form of a person. Now, it might have been a human being. Maybe, you know, I just didn't look close enough to watch him leave. But I have a feeling in my spirit, right from the time it happened, I thought that was an angel that appeared like a human. Now, that is very biblical. We see in the example of Abraham, when God sent three angels to him, that they came in human form. And he even said, I want you to stay. Let me make you a meal. And they stayed for the meal, just like a human being would stay for a meal, you know, and eat a meal. And, but they were angels. And they were there to give Abraham a message from God about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they led Abraham into that whole journey. And most of you know the story. If not, read about it in Genesis. It's an amazing uh, encounter with those angelic beings. But they were in human form. Now, the Bible says that, that you could be entertaining angels unaware and to show hospitality to people that come to your house. And there's been times when I've wondered, actually, if people that we've entertained were angels because of just the circumstances that were around at, at the time. I thought, man, that just doesn't almost seem human. It seems like, like God sent that person to just give us a blessing right at that time. So it could have been an angel. So be alert. And be hospitable to everyone because you could be entertaining angels unaware. God could be using uh, his, his angels coming in human form uh, to serve you. So that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Now, oftentimes angels come in different forms. And like I said earlier, sometimes you can see them with open vision. I don't usually see angels in open vision. How I usually discern angels or know that they're in the midst is I sense them. I kind of like sense that they're there. And I don't know how to explain it. You just have this knowing, whoa, there's an angel over there. And so God wants you to be able to discern them because if you do, you can partner with them because God sent them to serve you. So like if you had a servant, you would, 
you know, be able to give them some instruction or order. Uh, we have servants in our home. We have a gardener and we have, you know, a, a, a landscaper. We have a pool uh, fellow. We have someone who comes and cleans our house. And so when they come, we give them, you know, the work to do. And so did you know that you could actually command angels? I'm going to show you how in just a moment. Turn in your Bible to Psalm 103, verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. So there you have it. Now, the Lord's word is what angels obey. That is what they listen to. They don't really care what man has to say. They're there to do God's work. So they obey his word. But it also says obeying the voice of his word. Well, guess what? You are the one who gives voice to the word of God. And so one of the areas that I absolutely love is decreeing the word of God. And one of the reasons I love decreeing the word of God is because it dispatches angels. We have a whole book called Decrees, and it's a book of decrees from the scripture where you decree it over your life. But I know every time I make those decrees, I know that I'm dispatching angels to bring about the purposes of God in my life, through my life, for my life, uh, because that's why he sends them to us. And they are waiting. In fact, the Lord showed me one time, he said, you know, my angels are bored. My angels are looking for assignment, but he says, you have to give it to them. They are waiting for my word to be spoken so that they can be dispatched. Many people ask me all the time, well, can you talk to angels? And, you know, of course you can. I mean, it's, it's biblical. Look what happened with Mary when Gabriel came to her. And she didn't ask Jesus, like when Gabriel said to her, you are going to be the mother of the Messiah. She didn't ask, ask, ask God and, and go into prayer right there and say, oh, God, how can this be? She asked the angel, how can it be? And so there's interaction there. There was um, in interaction with, with um, Abraham. There's interaction with John's father. And so all throughout the scripture, we see that people have had interaction talking with angels. But I think the best thing to do is to just proclaim the word of God and and release the word of God to them. So like if you're sensing angels in your room, start decreeing the word of God because that's what gives them their assignment. Now, there's all different kinds of angels. One of them that we find in scripture is out of Isaiah uh, Six, And these are the seraphim. You know, when, when Isaiah went up into the throne room and, and he saw the Lord's glory there and the train of, of, of the Lord's robe was filling the temple. It was just an amazing encounter. And he was like, whoa, I'm undone. But in that throne room, he saw what is called seraphim. Now, seraphim means fiery ones. And so they're angels made of fire. And they're not like, you know, most people see angels or think of angels as, you know, an angelic being with a white robe and wings and a halo around their head or something. But there's many different kinds of heavenly beings that you find in the scripture. Now, I don't have time to go into a lot of teaching with you right now, but I want to suggest something to you because I'm passionate for you to learn. I want you to consider going on patriciakinginstitute.com and finding my course on Discerning Angels and Other Heavenly Beings. It's an amazing course with in-depth teaching and it'll train you how to discern and work with, partnering with God, how to work with the angels that he has sent to you and how to, to, to stir them into action according to the word of God. And that course is part of our uh, uh, diploma course. We have an associate degree in supernatural ministry. And so any course you take on there can go towards a degree, which is amazing. And also the Glory School. If you have not taken the Glory School yet, I highly recommend it because it'll teach you how to access through biblical foundations and instruction, the invisible realm of the kingdom of God. Now these seraphim, I have I have had experience with these angels. We've had them in our meetings. You know how I know? We smelt the fire 
We could smell the fire and we also saw the activity that followed them, the glory and the repentance, the conviction, the purging that happened, just like in the Bible. Now, I haven't seen them with open vision, but I've sensed their presence. I felt the Holy Spirit telling me that they were there and that they were operating in the Lord's purposes. And fire speaks of of the love of God. You know, the fire of the love of God is what purges us. Wouldn't you like to have an encounter with this kind of angel? Wouldn't you like to have an encounter just like Isaiah did? Well, you can, because anything in the Bible that you see, God put it there so that you would be able to identify with that. And so he wants you to have encounters in this realm. The second one is the cherubim out of Ezekiel 1 and chapter 10. And these are very interesting beings because they have the face of an eagle on one side, the face of a lion on the other, the face of, of a man on another, and the face of an ox on another. And so what a strange being that is. And they have four wings with little hands under each wing. It describes it in Ezekiel 1. It's like, it's mind boggling when you see what the scripture has to say about these angelic beings. Next is uh, the Zoa, and that's mentioned out of Revelation 4, verse 6, and 5, 14. And those are the living creatures, and they are in the shape of like eagles and lions and oxen and, and form, formed like men. And so they are a little bit different from the uh, cherubim because the cherubim release the glory. That's, that's their, their, their job is to steward the uh, glory. But these Zoa, they are living creatures. And I have seen the eagle angels. In fact, I had one called Swift come to me. Do you know that when the angel Swift came, it came looking exactly like um, a, a, a brown eagle, a golden eagle. It even had gold around it. It was just absolutely stunning. And the Lord told me that angel's name is Swift and I'm assigning it to you. Do you know that from that point, everything that we have done gets accelerated from the time we get revelation to implementation. It's just like that because we have an angel. And guess what? When you get an angel assigned to you, it's assigned to you for life. You know, because the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to teach you. And, you know, if you do go to Patricia King Institute, you can find more about it. This course will teach you so much. We've got spirit horses, chariot drivers, archangels, common angels, all different kinds of angels. But they're all there to serve you. Why? Because God loves you. You are his child and you have access to that realm. I'm going to pray right now for you to have angelic encounters and for discernment. And I'm believing that there's going to be an acceleration of God's purposes in your life from this time forward. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would make your people aware of the spirit of God that are around them, the angelic realm, Lord, that they would be opened up to it and, and, and just be connected to what they're doing and that they would learn how to partner with you in their activity. In Jesus' name, I just want to thank you so much for joining me on today's program. And God wants you to remember this, that you are loved with an everlasting love. You really, really are. We'll see you next time. The Glory School by Patricia King is a journey into the supernatural realms of the glory of God. It's practical, easy to understand, anointed, and will invite you into personal encounter with the Lord and His kingdom. All I can say is I met the love of God in a way I've never experienced it before. The Glory School explores the supernatural realms of the cross and the covenant, new creation realities, and the person of the Holy Spirit. It invites you into encounter with God. It will completely change your life. For the first time, really got the love of God. Uncover the truth of hearing the voice of God, experiencing the third heaven, angelic majesties, the fire, and the glory. Embark on a faith adventure today with Patricia King's biblically-based 18 DVD teaching, The Glory School. Be prepared for God to invade your life in a personal way like you've never seen before. XP Shiloh is a media church with an on-site congregation. And we have a web church congregation, people that join the official congregation by signing up for the web church and getting their own personal pastor assigned to them and a small group that they can belong to. It's so exciting because we actually reach 177 nations plus worldwide. Every Sunday morning, we webcast live 
our service in our studio. We have worship and we have prophetic, we have happy stories, we have rich word and ministry. XP Shiloh is a prophetic apostolic expression in the body of Christ. And so we're big on getting you built up in faith and the prophetic and just knowing what God is doing in this hour and how to connect into the flow of His agenda. For the online viewers, they're actually building relationship in the chat room. They're getting to know one another, they're praying for each other, uh, releasing prophetic insights, and a lot of them come into that chat room way before the service begins. And if you're not available to watch the actual live stream, we have it on demand for you afterwards, so you can watch it whenever you want. So you are welcome to watch at any time, so invite your friends. If you're looking for a really fantastic church, I want to invite you to become part of Shiloh. Our people just love it. They love it online and they love it locally. It's just awesome. It's a fellowship that will build you up. You know, I love the, I love the kingdom of God because it's relational and God has sent his own son to us so he could have relationship with us. Even though he's this great God that created the entire universe and every single person in it and knows every detail about everything, that he's still very, very personal and he loves one-on-one -on -one and, and he calls himself our father and Jesus our brother, our bridegroom. And, and it's all relational connections. And so because of that, we as a ministry, we love to build relationship with you. And one of the things I absolutely cherish are our mentoring days that we host on a regular basis, where people come into the studio here and, and just spend a day with me. It's a small group of people. We cut it off after just a few sign up so that we can have intimate interaction. And I love to take certain subjects and and study them out with you and, and empower you, do a little bit of coaching, a little bit of mentoring, a little bit of, of, of just relational interaction with Q&A and prophesying and praying, and just kind of fun stuff that you can do with a smaller group that you can't do in a larger conference. And the other great thing about these days is we actually do webcast them, so if you can't come into the studio, you can at least watch us through your computer screen and and just feel one with us in that way and get the nuggets that are given. But I want you to pray about joining me. We do a number of them throughout the years that you can find out more about it on patriciaking.com uh, because we have prepared them for you. And also as an added bonus for our Breaker Team, if you're a Breaker Team partner, then I'd love for you to, to be touched by God at an extra session that's exclusive just for partners where I bring gift to you and and pray for you and prophesy over you just because you're special and that we get to know one another because we are building the kingdom together in XP and in Patricia King Ministries. So I'd love to be able to have that time with you. Go on patriciaking.com, find out when the next one is and join me.